I'm Danny, that witch next door, and you're listening to That Witch Podcast. Well, hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode here at That Witch Podcast. I'm Danny. I'm that witch next door. I'm going to be your host, your guide, your mentor, and instructor in all things magic, witchcraft, especially astrology, and also witchy business. And uh, I'm very, very excited about today's episode because today marks the beginning of a new mini series. Yay! Everyone loved, including myself, everyone loved the applicable astrology series, which I will absolutely link for everyone in the show notes. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the applicable astrology series, um, a lot of people in that witch school have told me that they just listened to some of those episodes on repeat. Um, to, to study astrology. So I will link that so it's here and easy for you. But I'm really excited to introduce you to a brand new astrology mini series here. Man, don't we love our astrology around the, the witch neighborhood? Uh, this episode topic was inspired by one of the magical students inside that witch school, Brooke. Shout out to Brooke. Uh, Thank you so, so much for suggesting an episode on how to work with Mercury. As soon as I saw that suggestion, I went, how to work with the planets mini series. And I, I don't know about you, but I love a good mini series. (laughs) And This is such a fun way to dedicate a a whole little episode to each planet to really give them uh, the time and energy that they deserve because sometimes it's hard squishing squishing everyone into one episode. (laughs) Uh, So we are going to go through our solar system uh, starting with the main players and we're going to start at the very, very beginning with Mercury because Mercury is who came through and was suggested by Brooke. I love Mercury personally, I love working with Mercury, one of my favorite planetary energies that I have a very, very close connection with. Um, So I thought that this was perfect because this is a podcast. So I work with Mercury pretty much every single episode that I record. So who better to start and kick things off with than our pal, Merc? So these episodes, I'm going to really try and be as, as, uh, packed with info, but still quick hitting uh, as possible so that we can get you some info, get you some inspiration and get you into your weekend. So you can look forward to these on Fridays. So for Mercury, uh, this is the fastest orbiting planet. And whenever I talk about orbiting, I hope that we know I'm talking about the sun. <laughs> Other than the moon, uh, the moon is orbiting us. Uh, planet Earth. Um, But everything else we're talking about is orbiting the sun. Okay. So Mercury's orbit, one full Mercury revolution around the sun takes 88 days, 88 of our Earth days. Okay. This is obviously in our, our time. 88 Earth days would be one solar year. For for Mercury, for us, it takes us 365 days to go around. Um, So this is a fast boy. This is a quick moving planet. Now, Mercury, knowing that it goes that fast, it takes about three to four weeks or 15 to about 60 days. It can spend anywhere from three or four weeks or 15 to 60 days in a single zodiac sign. Why that big range? Because it depends on retrograde cycles. So Mercury uh, goes into its retrograde cycle approximately three to four times per year. When a planet is in its retrograde cycle, Let's say Mercury, you know, was in the sign of, we'll just use right now for an example, is in the sign of Aries, like it is, and moved into the sign of Taurus, but then went into its retrograde cycle, it could very well dip back into 
Aries. Okay. And so, you know, that counts towards the amount of days that Mercury spent in that sign. So that's where that little kind of orb can come from is just depending on the retrograde cycles. Speaking of which, we are going to talk about all of the retrograde cycles within each of these how to work with the planets uh, series episodes, okay? Because Mercury, even though this is the planet that has the big old reputation for going retrograde, so many beginners or people that don't know much about astrology um, or just starting to learn, uh, starting out learning, myself included, I used to think this when I very first started out, I didn't know. And I thought that only Mercury went retrograde. We always talked about Mercury retrograde, Mercury retrograde. And so I thought that was the only planet that that happened to. No, they all, um, they all have a retrograde cycle. So, uh, before we get into the retrograde though, let's talk a little bit about who this energy of Mercury is. Well, in Greek mythology, this is Hermes, messenger of the gods. Okay. But I also want to point out Mercury is also the god of cunning and is also even known as god of thieves. And it's really important to note this energy in Mercury. There is a swiftness and there's a wittiness here. And that cunning, that cunning of mind can can give Mercury uh, the ability to pull one over on people. And so this is where uh, Mercury gets some of its very, very distinctive energy. And it's why I personally have a very casual relationship and connection to Mercury. So some of the planets and deities that I work with, I have a much more formal connection and relationship with. And Mercury is probably my most laid back and casual one. And that's probably why I like it a lot. Because of this god of cunning, because of this really rulership over the mind, uh, Mercury also brings us that wit, like I said, which, which houses our sense of humor. There's a jokester in there. So learning your Mercury placement can actually lend you some insight into your sense of humor or other people's sense of humor, uh, which is really, really interesting and kind of learn more about your unique wit. But this is the planet of quick efficiency. Mercury is very, very detail-oriented and overall is a planet of interaction and processing. So what does that mean? Well, more specifically, it's all interaction, especially day to day, the more regular, um, because Mercury is one of the innermost planets. And when we get to the outer planets, we'll kind of explain the difference. But because Mercury is one of the innermost planets, we call this a personal planet. And that means it symbolizes more of our day to day experiences, our more day to day world and our more personal world as well. So Overall, Mercury is our interaction, our day-to-day -day interaction with each other and our environment. And it is also the processing of information in general. Again, how we process information that we go looking for, like that we learn, whether that's online or in a book or whatever, um, but also information that people give us through interaction, okay? It's also the information and interaction and processing that we put out right? He's this messenger of the gods. It's how we both receive messages, okay? Receive our environment, receive interaction, and how we give interaction and how we give our own processing, all right? And so this is why Mercury rules over the mind, because these are all matters of the mind. Mercury is, could you guess it? Which element? It's an air sign, obviously, with all of that intellectual, really cerebral energy. We are definitely, definitely in the air element here when we're talking about Mercury. And I have said this before on the show. I'm pretty sure it was on the show. Um, of all the planets that are um, air planets, this is Mercury is just the airiest air planet to me. 
meaning the essence of air energy really to me is just the strongest and most pure in, in mercury energy. So this is why the most associated colors with mercury are gray, silver, and yellow. These are really, really common colors associated with air. And especially that gray and silver, that like wispy, that, that's what I think of when I think of gray and silver. Um, I It just rings mercury energy to me. So if you are into color magic and color energy, gray, silver, and yellow are some of the most popular colors. Keep in mind, whenever we go through correspondences like this, there's going to be plenty of wiggle room. Uh, not only are there going to be, these are non, these are not all inclusive. There's, you know, we got to save some time around here. There are definitely additional colors associated that all, you know, and, and uh, different correspondences that I'll list through. There's going to be a little bit of overlap, a little bit of difference, depending on the resource that you look. Ultimately, I'll remind you every episode, it just comes down to your unique connection with Mercury and your how your intuition guides that connection and how Mercury kind of guides that, that direction, okay? I started out being super formal with Mercury because at the time I started working with Mercury, I was still toward the beginning of my deity work in the first place. And I was treating every single one of my deities like honestly the same. I had this idea in my head that I had to like maintain perfect consistency among each relationship, which is really funny to think about now, actually. <laughs> and I learned through experience that the, the connection relationship with each entity or deity or planetary energy, whatever it is you're working with, they're each going to have their own unique vibe and, and overall tone to it. Okay. So the, the energy or entity, whatever it is that you're working with, I promise you, if you're following your intuition, if you're keeping your earballs open and right, we talk about that a lot. Are you actually listening? Don't just put your message out in that ma magic. Don't just put out your manifestations and stuff. Take time to stop, slow down and listen to this is really where your intuition and your spirit guides and spirit and universe come into play. Okay. And so if you, especially with Mercury, because we're working in the realm of interaction and communication, right? You need to make sure you're listening. I noticed that when I first started working with Mercury, when I was being super, super formal and I was definitely having the majority of the voice, I was the one talking most of the time. Oh my God, Mercury, I don't know how to describe it, was just fucking with me left and right. My hands, because Mercury rules over our minds, they say Mercury also rules our hands because our hands are like, right? These direct like links from our brain. I mean, really all of our limbs are, but think about all that we do with our hands. And I swear I broke so many things. I, I was fumbling with the silliest little things. And I remember that I specifically broke glass, clear glass, like three or four days or three or four objects in a row or something like that. It was something crazy that really got my spiritual attention and awareness. And I was like, hold on, what the hell's going on? Because I'm very, very clumsy. This was, this was a little out of the ordinary. And when I was looking into it and I was asking my tarot cards for some insight as to, you know, who was kind of getting my attention and stuff, it was definitely Merc coming through. And it wasn't this mean, baneful thing. It was messing with me. It was that God of cunning. It was that jokester. It was that trickster. And from then on, I, Mercury is really one of the biggest reasons why I learned each planet has its own or each entity or deity has its own unique energy and connection with you. And that was when I very, very first began uh, treating each planet or each deity with their own unique tone and kind of manner that I would approach them and work with them in and stuff. And Mercury definitely has brought out so much more of my natural wit and humor. I, I absolutely love, love working with Mercury because when we're working in the mind, this means that one of the best ways to honor this planet or to work with this planet, this can literally count 
as like an offering to Mercury is through studying and learning. It's through stimulating your own natural curiosity. And I love that so much because I have ADHD. So (laughs) any invitation to find something that's exciting and learn absolutely everything about it is awesome by me. Really, when we think about like all of these different details that details that also is very Mercury. When we're looking at all these different qualities, traits, and details of Mercury, this is really how you learn to work with the planet, okay? So you learn all of these qualities. You kind of get an understanding of their vibe, right, that I paint for you. I'm going to give you some specific correspondences like those colors. I'll let you know that Mercury is an air element. Mercury's day of the week Uh, rules the day of Wednesday. We call Wednesday Mercury's day. We know that Mercury rules over like the mind and the hands when it comes to physical biology. And Mercury is associated with the throat chakra, which makes tons and tons of sense, right? Um, Our voice, okay? Mercury, because this is an air element, I do want to make mention especially when we're thinking about body parts and such. Definitely, we can tap into lung work and breath work when we're working with Mercury. Definitely don't forget that. So you gather all of this, these correspondences I give you, all these different traits and this vibe that I kind of paint for you. And then you apply this into your magic, okay? And how you might want to work with this planet. So maybe that means using Wednesdays, as a a day, right? It's just an easy reminder. Oh, today's Wednesday, Wednesday. That's right. It's ruled by Mercury. I'm going to spend some time with Mercury today. We do this in that witch school. I try to go on once a day and, and pay some kind of homage to the planetary ruler of that day and invite everyone to share how they're either working with that planetary's uh, energy that day or uh, what their intentions are for that day. I really invite you to do the same thing. So maybe this means on Wednesdays, you really work with the air element. Maybe this means that when you want to start connecting and working with Mercury, you uh, sign up for another class. You sign up for a workshop you've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, Maybe this means you're speaking your mind. Maybe your way of honoring and working with Mercury is, is... going back and editing that text message to say what you actually want it to say. Maybe it's speaking up in the first place and posting that post, making that content and putting it out there. That is something that I love using uh, Mercury Magic for is in my business. Again, obviously here on the microphone. I love dedicating departments of my business to these different planetary energies. It is it is immensely aligning. Honestly, it's just a wonderful, wonderful way to further spiritually align with your business and your career and make it even more sacred to you. So I really use Mercury and I call on his energy when I want to write a blog post. Again, I always call on him every single podcast episode. Mercury is here with me. And every single podcast episode after I'm done and it was slamming and it was awesome. I'm like, Merc, I appreciate you, buddy. And I give that, I give that thanks. I also will look up different objects or find objects that I just feel like remind me of Mercury. It doesn't have to be anything official. It could be something you see that just reminds you of Mercury's vibe. And um, I'll put that on my altar as an offering or an honor to to Mercury. I have a bottle um, of sacred air on my altar, and that is very much dedicated to Mercury. There really are endless, endless ways, especially when it comes to this planet, because this is such a fast moving planet. This is all about efficiency and interaction and processing. This is why Mercury gives us really, truly the beauty of what never ending curiosity is. Mercury reminds us that there is always more to learn. There's always, always more to learn. There's, you can always continue expanding the mind. So 
after hearing all of this, take some time to really think about Mercury. Maybe go on your own little internet or Google research. Um, maybe pull out and dust off an astrology book that you haven't looked through in a while or that you keep meaning to open for the first time and turn to the Mercury page and what's jumping out at you and how can you, what's a, what's an even really, really simple way you can work with Mercury today or going into this weekend even. All right. That is it for our first How to Work with the Planets episode of our new uh, astrology mini mini series here on That Witch Podcast. This is so much fun. I'm just so, 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 so excited to do the rest of them. Right now in That Witch School, the current online course that we're all working through together is exploring the astrological chart. And we are all learning about and talking about planets, signs, and houses, just like Mercury here. So if you love this and you can't get enough and you want to go in depth and you also want to join like the most magical, welcoming, supportive, badass community, private, online, uh, jump to the show notes, go to thatwitchnextdoor.com slash enroll and join us in that witch school because we are having the best time. Um, I just, I absolutely love it. And I love all of you. Thank you, thank you for taking time out of your Friday to sit here with me and talk about astrology. I hope that I was able to offer you some inspiration and some good information today. All right, everybody, I hope you have the best weekend. Stay safe, have fun, and stay magical out there. Hey, magical human. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of That Witch Podcast. If you want to support the show, the best way to do that is to share with a friend or give a shout out on your social media. You can also leave a five-star rating and review on both Apple and Spotify. And if you can't get enough of all of our witchy, magical content here in the neighborhood, you definitely want to make sure you're subscribed to my email newsletter, That Witch Gazette. It's a really fun, really convenient one-stop shop to stay up to date on all of the news and happenings here in our neighborhood. If you have any questions, suggestions, ideas for the show, or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, you can send me a message at thatwitchnextdoor.com slash conjurethatwitch. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.